Hello everyone, today I'm going to be going over how to do smooth gamepad movement using GameMaker Studio here. This is going to be the kind of movement that you would see in a uh, twin stick shooter, something like your uh, Hotline Miamis or Geometry Wars. I've searched all over the internet and I eventually did find something that works for me. And the code is actually so much more simpler than I expected it to be. It's only a few lines and uh, we're going to get into that in a minute here. So this code will go in the step event of your player character. Now in my situation, I set it up to where if a gamepad is connected, then it will go ahead and use the uh, gamepad controller code. Otherwise, it's just going to default to the keyboard controller. So first, I'd like to go into a little bit of how I have my keyboard controller set up. It's set up here for six axis movement, meaning you can move in the four primary directions as well as in diagonal angles. So some people might say that you have to increment the X and the Y values at the same time to do the diagonal movements. And some people might say, no, you need to add uh, to the H speed value and the V speed value in order to do the diagonal movements. But the problem with this is that if you move diagonally in your game, you will probably end up moving about twice the speed as you would moving at the uh, right angles, which is a very common problem for this type of movement. So some people might say that you need to use the Pythagorean theorem to correct for the diagonal movement speed. But what I've actually found is that simply by assigning a direction and a speed pretty much eliminates the problem altogether. I haven't been able to notice any increased speed moving diagonally this way, or at least if there is an increase in speed, then I, I'm not able to notice it, which is good enough for me. So... This is a code that's uh, widely accepted for keyboard movement. However, if you try to plug these uh, keyboard checks, say, into the analog values of your gamepad, the movement is not going to feel very good at all. In fact, it's actually going to lock your movement into like a diamond shape or like a box shape of some type when you're trying to move, uh, say, like in a smooth circular motion. So for gamepads, this is out the window. We can't use any of this code. So now we come to the gamepad controller support. This is a separate script that I have set up over here. So the core of this code is basically just this block of code plus this block of code. You can simply copy and paste these two blocks of code into your player step event and it will work. It will give you very smooth stick movement but this doesn't account for the angle or the uh, rotation of your sprite. So I did kind of uh, pad this code with my own code just to account for the image angle. So these if statements here are basically saying that if the stick is not being moved, say you're only moving with uh, the left stick and your finger is off the right stick or vice versa, for the instance here of the left stick movement, It'll just make sure that the image angle is always equal to the direction when you stop moving and make sure the player is stopped with a speed of zero. Otherwise, the player will be in movement using this block of code down here. And same thing with the right stick. If you're not touching the right stick, I want to make sure the image angle is equal to the direction. Otherwise, have the image angle equal the direction of the stick for uh, targeting in, in like a twin stick shooter. And this is, of course, relating to the variable I set up called a dead zone limit, which is set to 0.2 right here. And this is kind of the innermost limits of the dead zone. So anything more than 0.2 would be considered out of the dead zone and meaning the, the player is in movement. Of course, in addition to the step code that I just showed you, you will want to set the gamepad's dead zone in the create event of the um, player. This will set the dead zone across all the sticks on the controller in uh, all the cases of the sticks being used. So it's pretty important to set this to something that you're comfortable with. If the dead zone is set too low, then you will get uh, erratic movements and uh, kind of spazzy controlling issues with uh, your movement. So I felt that a dead zone of 0.2 was pretty safe. Okay, now that we've set up the controller, let's go ahead and try it out and uh, see how it actually performs. Okay, so for this, I'll have my DualShock 4 PlayStation controller connected to my PC. This is through the use of the DS4 Windows kind of third-party software here. 
but it basically performs just the same as any Xbox controller or third-party controller you have connected to your uh, PC. So let's go ahead and run it. So for my game here, I basically have these uh, little red enemies popping out from uh, one of the random corners in the room. But you can see I can move my ship and basically... Actually, it's a little bit annoying with these uh, red guys running around. I'm going to go ahead and turn them off just for the sake of uh, demonstrating the movement here. Okay, so nobody else should spawn in the game now. But you can see I have pretty fluid movement just with the left stick on my DualShock 4. And not only can I move very smoothly in just like a complete circle here, but I can also move at a variable speed just by either um, slightly moving the DualShock 4 or moving it all the way. I can move a little faster. So it also takes into account the position of the stick, whether you have it fully pressed forward or just a little bit pressed forward. So you can use this for like uh, sneaking forward or or uh, just walking in your game. But you can see as I as I let go of the stick, the player will still maintain its uh, direction. Without the code that I added in on top of the controller, the player character would kind of just snap back to its uh, default if you didn't have the uh, stick in motion, which looked a little janky, so I'm glad that's fixed. So that's everything on the left stick for movement, but I also have movement on the right stick for actually targeting, so I can get a full 360 degree of motion for targeting rather than just like a 90 degrees or 45 degrees if you're doing a diagonals. So if I'm aiming with the left stick and I just happen to let go of the stick, the player will snap back to its uh, previous direction that it was in from moving. You see, if I let go, it snaps right back to uh, the last direction the character was facing. I don't really know a solution for this if I want to keep the player facing the direction that the um, right stick was in before letting go. That's still something I'm trying to work out. But, I mean, this is not a bad start for getting a good, uh, good feeling twin stick shooter controller going. So what I was trying to do here was kind of create a kind of basic Geometry Wars clone. But I'm sure you can use this kind of controller in many different situations, such as uh, top-down shooters or role-playing games, I don't know. So I will paste all of the code that I've used here today in the description below, so you can just copy and paste it if you want. If you have any questions, or maybe you have some comments, I would actually welcome your criticism on this. I'd love to know if I could be doing something better, or if, if I've done something wrong. I'm not well versed in Game Maker Studio, but I'm always trying to learn new things, so... So thank you all for watching, I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing, I'd really appreciate it, and I'll catch you all later in the next episode.